Welcome to the Fitness Plus Technology Podcast for club owners, operators, and fitness professionals. Each week, host Brian O'Rourke brings you an expert interview with a global influencer at the crossroads of fitness and technology. You gain the insights, tools, and inspiration you need to stay connected to the pulse for what matters most for your business in the age of exponential technologies. Welcome, listeners. I'm your host, Brian O'Rourke. It's great to have you here for episode 137. It is in November, if you can believe it, of 2022. It's great to have you. And today, we're going to be speaking with Will Dahlgren, who is a senior key account manager for InBody. During this interview, we're going to discuss the notion of onboarding, uh, the importance of body composition versus weight loss, and a bunch of other interesting things around this kind of technology, which is really being used by a number of brands to improve the member experience, as we'll discuss during the podcast. Before we get into that interview, I want to encourage you, please, to go to fittechorg.com or fittech.org, I should say, the links below, because a lot of sponsors like InBody and a bunch of others from American Council of Exercise uh, to MyZone to, uh, we talked to Ernst with Function, many others around the world are members, and you can join the Fitness Industry Technology Council with a professional membership for as little as $100 a year. This helps finance the content we put out uh, to help the industry understand how to better adopt technology. So please give it a a shot and a look if you don't mind. Um, And the other thing I wanna mention is start looking at your calendars now for next year because I know FIBO is coming back up with your Factors event, of course, Ursa out in San Diego. That's only a few months away, so I hope you're making your arrangements now and I get to see you there. So, without further ado, let's welcome Will Dahlgren to the show. Welcome, listeners, and as I mentioned in the intro, I've had the opportunity to invite Will Dahlgren on the line with InBody. Will, thanks for joining us. How are you this morning? I'm doing well, Brian. Thanks for having us, and uh, I'm excited to be here. Yeah, you were telling me you were at uh, the FISA event, and uh, unfortunately, the hurricane was coming, so you all had to kind of scoot out of there a little early this time, right? Yeah, that's right. Uh, got out of there early Wednesday morning. Yeah, that's a great yeah, event. Time. Well, I'm glad you had time to visit with uh, uh, me and our listeners. We'll enjoy this conversation. You know, uh, having visited with you before, and I don't know how many of our listeners are familiar with the InBody product, but, you know, our podcast really focuses on technology and integration into operations. And why, if you don't mind, you know, the challenge that many operator space is, of course, how do you integrate technology into the customer member journey and all the operational considerations? Can you share for some of the listeners who might not know what InBody actually does for a member? Absolutely. So InBody provides uh, members a way to kind of cut through the idea that all weight loss is positive and all weight gain is negative. Uh, so if you have a member start and they're doing all the right things and they gain two pounds, what the InBody can show them is that, hey, you're kicking butt still. You just gained five pounds of lean mass and you lost three pounds of fat. So, you, you know, net plus two pounds, uh, but you're still doing all the right things. Um, and that should allow the gym to retain that member longer, uh, really show them some objective data. This isn't, you know, the trainer uh you know poking or prodding at them and and them having some doubts it's just an objective measure of water muscle and fat in the body which is truly what we're trying to change with diet and exercise Uh, it's not all you know weight down good and weight up bad it just depends on what that weight was and that's what we do really well it's a a super fast uh, while maintaining a very high level of accuracy Uh, so yeah that's in a nutshell, it's a retention, engagement, and educational tool. Uh, if we get to the technical side, uh, the technology, it gets uh, probably a little bit boring, uh, but we do have some unique things about the InBody 2 that make it uh, as accurate as it is and kind of trusted by some of these uh, the bigger names in the game. Yeah, and with respect to that then as well, 
there's an app platform or other kind of means where the member can observe their progress and things like that, of course. So it's a personalized experience, I assume. Totally. So yeah. it used to just be a printout. Um, and even way back when we had a receipt, uh, if you remember those days. Uh, but now we have an app that's totally free uh, that every member, if they use their ID, uh, their phone number as their ID, they'll get a text message where they can track and, and view their results at any time. We have a web management platform for the operator side, so they can kind of aggregate data, send out push notifications and, and track members that way. Um, so yeah, there's definitely a couple of different ways. And even some of the larger operators have integrated us in to their system in a way that's like unique to them. So, uh, you know, Orange Theory Fitness has their own kind of operating system and the way their members view the results. So we uh, try to be as flexible as possible and we just want to deliver this data in a way that makes sense uh, within the brands we work with. So uh, that open API has been a big deal for us and we've definitely integrated with over like a hundred different software applications and just individual uh, businesses as well. Yeah, so as, as listeners will know, um, you know, we talked with a lot of leaders in the space around the challenges of integrating technologies into the member experience in a way that is frictionless. In other words, it's not hard to do. Um, yeah. It actually is relevant to why, you know, the member journey, it's relevant to the why, you know, like why are you going to work out in the first place? And it addresses things like outcomes, like, you know, cause real data, you could go to a gym uh, every day of the week for an hour and a half. And if you really don't have some means of measuring progress, how do you know it's worth the effort? Um, what, what, you know, what, what do you think in that regard? Cause there's a lot of technologies that, that it's a lot more difficult to kind of piece that together in a way that isn't as difficult for the member, that, that isn't as, you know, challenging, uh, uh, you know, and then other ways that maybe aren't as clear in, in the value they provide for doing it. What, what is your thinking on that, Will? So, yeah, that is, that's like the ultimate challenge, right? Uh, getting siloed data to all work and play together in a nice way that makes sense for everybody. And, my thought is it definitely depends on, on the facility and the uh, whether it be a franchise or a corporation and, and really what they're trying to deliver in terms of a member experience. Um, I have some people who use this during the onboarding procedure. Uh, they don't even show their clients the results. They don't have anybody look at anything. And they wait until that member's had a workout and then they sit them down and show them these results. Um, and I think that's just a unique way for that particular operator uh, to engage their clients. And they have a very, you know, they tell me it's a very high closing rate. Uh, meanwhile, most, most people, um, I think, are looking for the app, you know, on their phone. And so what we've tried to do is make our data so, like, malleable that, you know, you can plug and play it wherever you'd like. And then however you want to express it. Um, is, is really about your brand and what you're trying to do. Because we can, you know, that when you touch on just like everything making sense, I think that's our biggest challenge is like, you know, what's dry lean mass? You know, as people get their results and they're like, hey, what's going on with this number? Is it good? Which is a whole nother, uh, you could do a whole nother pod just on what's good and good and bad because that, they don't really exist exactly. Right. Um, and so what we've tried to do is really focus on not what today is, right? You're going to get numbers and set a baseline, but we're all at the gym to make changes. So who cares what today is? Let's focus on what we want to be in 60, 90 days. And so we've tried to make it really, really smooth in terms of just tracking and trending the data over time, uh, because that is truly what is most important. That's why the member is going to stick with a facility. That's really what's going to bond them. Um, so when we can make that really clear and easy to understand, like even in a graph format, right? Of muscle up, uh, fat down, that type of a thing. Um, it really does help our operators, uh, I think, increase their retention and uh, give them an opportunity uh, to sell more memberships as well. But 
That's a, I mean, it's a, a phenomenal question in, uh, in terms of like, how do we deliver this data in a way uh, that makes sense for our, our struggle is partly the end user, but also the operator. Because yes. obviously the end user is not buying our equipment, it's the operator. Uh, so multi-pronged approach for us and it's taken time, uh, but I think we're, we're definitely on the right track here. Yeah, and without giving any uh, secrets away, because obviously you work with a lot of very well-known clients and some of this is secret sauce for some, I'm sure. <laughs> but, uh, you know, it is the ultimate challenge, even in a technology like this, which to me is so obvious in its, uh, in its logical application that you'd want to have, uh, is, isn't it kind of the secret sauce of how you exactly do that? You know, so thinking about your sales process, so thinking about your service process, so thinking about... It's really how do you make that fit in a way that makes the most sense for everybody, right? And that's different depending to your point of earlier, example of earlier. It's really different depending on the, the operation and the experience that uh, that operator wants to deliver, isn't it? Oh, it, it, it's just that is such an eye opener when, you know, you're maybe just a fitness consumer. And when you get into the fitness so like business side is... You know, Lifetime is a great client of ours, and they don't typically. They how it's hard is they just set it on the floor, and they like that. Their members like that. And is it how we would want it exactly? Uh, probably not. But it opened our eyes to this idea that hey, every club's going to be a little bit unique in how they want to deliver uh, what we provide. And so uh, that was a real eye opener. And even in their clubs now they they'll do the printouts as well but when you look at them compared to let's say you know orange theory fitness it's it's a lot different it's obviously less of a footprint on the ocf side it's um you know not as many employees not as many members so what what they really want to do is you know engage people and have the opportunity for them to be there as they go through uh the test and and talk about it um so it is it's amazing when the guy dropped the, uh, you know, I don't even show people their results and I put them on before and then they go work out and then I show them. I was like, okay, that's, <laughs> that's a unique way. And he said, they're just all full of like this good energy. And then you show them the results and maybe they're not so, you know, uh, harsh. And so they, they, they have a high success rate with it that way. Um, but I've even seen clubs have, like they use it at events. And that's also another way uh, that people can market themselves. And it just, at the end of the day, gives them an opportunity to talk about how we, like what we do. And that's always, it's changing people. Yes. At the end of the day, fitness is about changing people uh, and changing their body composition. So it is, you know, it does go hand in hand. Um, but yeah, it's taken some time for us to get to where we're at today. So it has been a learning experience in delivering those results in a meaningful, yeah. Uh, yeah. easy to and, understand way. And how to create value because, you know, right, depending on how you want to, uh, you know, de design your user experience, it's yeah. in the end, it's about educating the, the, the customer member, you know, it, because people come yeah. in with a lot of preconceived notions, as you pointed out in the beginning about weight. I just want to lose weight. Well, there's good and what bad ways of losing weight. And we talk about body composition, there's a lot more to it than just the LBs on the, on the scale, right? Yeah, absolutely. And it, we like to, I, it's such a buzzword, but like you empower these people to, Hey, stop that. Stop this whole, like, you know, race to the bottom of weights and, and thinking that's a positive thing. And honestly, since I started, you know, a long time ago, it's come a long ways. I see more and more people saying, Hey, stop reading what's on the scale and just kind of like maybe even showing a picture of them at 160 pounds. And then again, at 160 pounds, they just, it looks totally different um, depending on what that body composition is, but it's still a struggle. I mean, uh, we've done a, a, a disservice, I think, in terms of that weight loss mentality of uh, you know, just weight loss, weight loss, weight loss. I say it, my dad says it every day and it's like, dad, come on, get off of that. Like, you know, you know what I do, man. Um, and it's just so ingrained in us at this point. And 
you know, trying to get people out of that has been a, a struggle, but it is coming along, I think. Yeah, no, I agree with that. And it's, it's, pretty, it's pretty relevant because, as you know, what, the number one driver for joining clubs is weight loss in general. And so I think yep. that, you know, when you look at tools like this, it, it's a huge opportunity to use technology in a way to really help people redefine the way they're thinking about that so it, they are more informed and they can make better decisions. And it certainly, if you do it right, contributes to longer lifetime value of member. Because if, if, you're, if you're thinking about things in the right way, you're gonna view it from a long view. You're not going to think, oh, I've gotta lose 10 pounds in the next two to three weeks. And that's the measure of the outcome I need. So once I'm done with that, then that's all I need to do, right? <laughs> totally. And that's, you know, I use this line all the time that there's like no summit to this wellness mountain, right? There's no time when we just get to walk away and say like, my work is done, like I'm healthy. So it's always uh, an up and down thing. And what we used to do is just not all of us, but there was an idea that if we just didn't, you know, calories in, calories out. And while that's true to an extent, um, if you limit your calories so low, I mean, you end up taking your metabolic rate with it because you end up losing muscle and all of these, like I call it like a cascading negative uh, kind of like waterfall there where it's like, I lost my muscle. Now I'm not sleeping as well. I don't feel as good. I'm not burning as many calories. Um, why did I join this place? You know, I, it, why am I paying money for this again? And that's, you know, that's something that you can even educate. I always argue that the results are of value, whether they are positive or negative, um, because at least, you know, you have a chance to course correct. If you're losing a bunch of muscle and you're kind of putting in a lot of effort and money into the wrong uh, program. So you can see, Hey, this didn't work for me. Now I can course correct and, and try something new uh, and give those trainers, give the operators a chance to say like, Hey, you know, are you eating? Like, are you being healthy about this? Those types of things. Um, I think they mean a lot to members when you're not just worried about their, you know, their next swipe at the credit card or their next renewal. It's like, hold on, are you okay? And are you being healthy in your quest for a you know, healthier body? Because uh, I think that's what we're all after. Yeah, we far, I think most people would agree that it'd be far better to be in that kind of an exchange in business than just running out equipment for people to come in to lose 10 pounds in two to three weeks. And I mean, because that's not as good of a formula. So, you know, so we kind of established our technology and the challenge of integrating into user experience. Uh, the fact that people want to kind of go to gyms largely to lose weight, and that's what they think, but that kind of preconceived notion of weight loss is more complicated than most people realize, uh, you know, uh, how different operators apply this tech given their business model. So, and then the idea of onboarding in general, depending on the different business model, you, you mentioned lifetime and how they approach it, you know, Orange Share, how they approach it. But if you, you know, so when it comes to that technology alone, and given the fact that it's not just weight itself, wh where, where are we now? Where are we going with respect to that? I mean, you know, because there are many metrics that technology is now starting to enable uh, measurement of. So what are your thoughts on that? So we're continually looking at ways to personalize the thing and allow people to leverage the data in different ways. So whether that be a basis of metabolic rate um, and, you know, with a multiple you know, activity multiplier or something along those lines where they can really see you know, what would my calories look like if I split them up evenly and give them enough info uh, to be that's so specific to them uh, to be a little bit dangerous, but not you know, making over recommendations either. Um, we are also, we're currently integrating with just a mess of people, a uh, mess of other companies right now in an effort to deliver and, and drive those, the, the member experience in a direction that, I know the, the gold standard's always like, you know, a 360 de degree view of all of our clients in one place. And that's what we're, uh, we're trying to allow for operators to have that opportunity by integrating to what they're using um, and doing it in a way that is 
hopefully as seamless as possible. And one thing we're, I wouldn't say we're rolling out yet. We're, uh, we're kind of in the early stages of uh, something called like a kiosk. And it would be like a self-service station where somebody could walk up. They have no clue what this thing is. Uh, they could see how it works, what kind of information they'll get, uh, log in, go through the whole test, um, and boom, they're done. They don't ever need a trainer. You know, they're a total introvert, that type of a thing. They don't want to talk to anybody. So that gym then would have an opportunity to say like, hey, I saw you took an, took an in-body test and just wanted to see if you had any questions. Um, potentially that member reaching out about training or you know, maybe they take a couple of tests and they're not seeing the results they wanted to uh, and coming back and saying, hey, I, I think I do need some help here. Um, so we're trying to make it so easy that these facilities don't even need anybody standing next to the device explaining and delivering the results uh, while still capturing that member as a potential lead. Um, so that's that's been in the works for a long time. Um, and, and definitely something I believe in, because I think it's possible. Um, and so that's really the route we're taking right now is um, a, a little bit more like more data as well. So we've introduced blood pressure cuffs that integrate with our devices, um, height measuring devices as well, just in it seemingly. So um, trying to become a more complete solution while also becoming like a, a much more simple implementation. In, in light of that feature and in light of the some of the will in light of some of the things we talked about that are challenges and opportunities in adopting this kind of technology. In, in your experience dealing with clients both existing and perspective what you know what would be your recommendations for our listeners if they're operators to really think about their business. And how would you advise them to approach adopting a technology like InBody or any other technology? Are there some pearls of wisdom over the years that you've kind of accumulated uh, on how to approach these things? Because I think the reason I asked the question is I think a, a lot of times people, they, they see these things and they've got a hundred other things going on in their mind and they go, well, yeah. Why should I do this versus that? Or what does this mean? Or it's overwhelming sometimes for operators to, to know what to do and how to do it. I mean, what, what, are there any pearls of wisdom you could share that would make help people in that regard? Yeah, maybe, maybe they won't be pearls, but I'll try to share anything I picked up um, over the years. And one was, you know, him really well. Uh, I don't know if I'll name the name, but he was worried that his clients wouldn't see results. And I was like, wait, hold on. And he's, I don't know what they're doing, you know, 23 hours of the day. So anyways, he, he, uh, he ended up buying a machine and he was like, well, I was so wrong. People are seeing results like crazy. I don't know why I had doubted myself. And I would say that to every operator out there is like, don't doubt yourself. We know what works here. We know um, that, you know, these things are tried and true. So believe in yourself, believe in your program, number one, because uh, what we'll do is prove it works. And, you know, not every single person is going to have these perfect, you know, perfect linear line. And because what that gym operator shared with me was he said, well, the crazy part was is the, let's say, 10 percent of people who got negative results, they all signed up because those were the ones who said, I need you the most. Like, I know I'm not doing good. And so. Um, trust the process on that side of things. And then, you know, I had a chance to be at the D1 training conference this past weekend and they had Terrell Owens uh, speak and he put a picture up of his trainer and he said, this guy changed my life. The picture was of Terrell at the uh, Hall of Fame, his Hall of Fame induction. And here he is, he's got his arm around his trainer, you know, giving him a kiss. This guy's so unassuming. And so like, he's an older gentleman, um, but that's when they said, you know, we take for granted as fitness, you know, if I was a fitness manager, trainer, the opportunity that really can change people's lives. And so that would be the other thing I would say is, you know, don't take those opportunities for granted and don't let people walk out your door because they're being misled by data that doesn't matter. And that is almost always their weight. And I've 
you know, I was a fitness, like I was a personal trainer, like many, many years ago, and I lost clients to the scale. Um, their pants weren't fitting, they're feeling great, but they can't get over that. And so that's where we can come in and play a very, like play our part. We're not going to be some miracle cure. Um, but when you implement something like Inbot, what it does is really, it shows, hey, hey I'm not, like, I'm not scared of the data. I'm going to show you and I'm going to prove to you how well this works. Um, so when you start implementing, you know, 30, 60, 90 day check-ins, people are really, uh, they see value in that, especially when they're seeing results. And um, it's just such a validation because I, you know, you touched on the effort it takes. It also takes like time and money. And so when we're validating that for people, it's a big relief. And uh, I would love to say, you know, I have perfect retention statistics and throw some numbers at you. Um, but, you know, those can be, be a little tough to get from our operators. But um, it, it's it, like you said, they go hand in hand. And I would just trust that process that your programming works and to look at something, you know, if not the embody, something like it so that you can prove to your clients in an objective way that what they're paying for is working. Yeah, that's that, and that's a really important point that I think a lot of folks uh, in business in general, not picking on uh, anyone in our industry slice, because I was talking with some of my partners this morning about uh, a business and and member act or not member acquisition, but customer acquisition, and and in the end, you have to have a good product that people value for what it is, and if you're not delivering that in the end in a valuable way. You're not going to have any pricing power. You're going to become commoditized and you're not going to have any stickiness to what you're doing. Like you can acquire all the customers you want, but if those relationships aren't uh, about long-term value, then you're really, you're not going to gain ground. It's not going to be a, in the end, what game are you playing? Are you just playing hmm. a game of acquiring people to come through your door and then leave? Are you, are you, are you playing the game of acquiring people and building value by, but demonstrating that what you do means something and educating them on how to think about this. I mean, that's really where you, that's really the business I'd want to be in personally. And that's the business I am in, but I don't get that other people don't see that. Yeah. And I think, I think we've talked about this prior was just, you know, you can have, when you have 50 things going on, rents do, you know, this company's calling about something unrelated and, it can get lost. And that's what I really enjoyed about the Terrell Owens thing was don't take this for granted. Right. I mean, it is pretty cool. And I think it is why most of us get into the fitness world is, right. is you really do see, you get to see live an impact that you're making and you know, try to try to let that be your kind of your North star instead of always, uh, I guess, seeing how we can scrape by and, and maybe make, you know, a little more on back. end if we didn't purchase X, Y, Z, because, uh, yeah, I think in the long run, if you're playing that long game, delivering as much value is what it's all about. Right. And then the other thing uh, for you, for the listeners that I, I know many of them believe, but when I talk about the money principle, the M-U-N-E, and we talk about the execution being the final component, you have to look at tools that actually can do this in a way that's consistent, scalable, and personalized so that, because then you go, well, what are your alternatives? If you're going to really deliver this uh, kind of value paradigm, what alternative do you really have? Well, it's really difficult to do it any other way. I mean, you're talking about stuff that not that long ago, only the top athletes in the world were the only ones that would have access to this kind of stuff. And now you can apply this kind of information to anybody at a, at a price point that is just, uh, you know, what, what else could you do? I mean, there's no option and it's, it's essentially highly automated. So you know, if you figure out how to integrate it into your user experience, why would you not do that? I, I don't understand why you would. Yeah, and that's a, you know, I think it's a fear thing uh, sometimes. Yeah. Uh, just, hey, what if I do this and it goes wrong? That's right. always a, a question on everybody's mind. But that is something we've, you know, we've seen kind of learned over the years was it's not just about us getting a machine in the door. Right. Like, the more important is what's happening after. So we've developed, you know, a whole account management team for the post sale process, um, you know, product support, web support, um, and really uh, try to make that more robust so that we can deliver and 
uh, for our operators who can then deliver it for their clients. Because um, I think in the fitness industry too, sometimes it's like, is this a fad? Like, is this going to go away? Is this going to be Nordic Trek 3.0, whatever the case may be? Um, and we've showed some staying power at this point. Um, that I think more people are starting to be like, okay, yeah, these guys are the real deal and uh, they're going to be here. And that's you know, something I take pride in. And one of our clients, they told me, you know, we really appreciate that even when, when stuff hits the fan, you guys pick up the phone. And that's, you know, we, we know everything's not going to be perfect, uh, but we will be here for you to support you um, no matter what. That's kind of our, our, our end game on our side in, and the value we see us delivering to clients um, in that long run, just like our operators should be playing the long game. We're trying to play that too. Yeah. Trust. It's all about trust. You gotta, you gotta build people. You gotta build trust. And I think you're right. Well, I mean, I think there is sometimes a pretty high fear of this is faddish or this is temporary. And a lot of people have good reason to feel that way because we know of some debacles from the past and other companies and approaches that maybe weren't as sound, but, uh, but no, I think you're right. So Will, and again, thank you. Embody's uh, a member of the Fitness Industry Technology Council. And Will, as I mentioned in the in the opening, uh, you know, you have a very uh, a proven and uh, highly quality background in the space. So it's good to talk to people like you who know what they're talking about. But are there any uh, other kind of uh, pearls of wisdom? I know you said you didn't know if you had any pearls, but any other pearls of wisdom for our listeners? And by the way, we'll have all the connections uh, for your site and your uh, your profile, et cetera, in the show notes. So listeners, you know where to go with that. But any final words of wisdom for the people out there that are listening to us today? Yeah, it's. Uh, I think sometimes it's, uh, we talked about all the value it can deliver in other ways, retention, uh, engagement, uh, customer acquisition costs helping there. One thing to think about for everybody is like, you're making all these changes in everybody. Like, don't you want that data? Because that's something else we can do is provide aggregate level data that shows, hey, for the past five years, this is how much change was made at XYZ Fitness. And I would want that, you know, if I was out there busting my butt to help everybody change, um, you know, that's like proof is in the pudding type of information. Right. And I think sometimes, you know, we do have one particular operator who's using the data to see which programs are most effective, who they're most effective with, and and maybe you know they can glean something out of that. Yeah, exactly. Yeah, and it's like just helping them target more effectively certain programming. And if it's not, again, course correcting. So um, that would be my last thing: is like don't you know, the data is hard sometimes to conceptualize, but I think there's a ton of like just value in that data as well. Yeah, and it can completely affect the way you present what your value delivery is with the product and services and packages you provide. I mean, it's so, yeah, then you start really getting insight that helps inform you as to how to approach all those aspects of the business. You're, you're so right. That's, a, that's another level of thinking that I think that you need people more and more need to get to, um, to be successful yeah. in their business, right? For sure. Yeah. And it's, it's a, you know, it's nobody's fault. It's just something that sometimes people don't even, you don't know what you don't know. That's right. And unless you're super dialed in with thin body, like I am, uh, it might, might be something you're not thinking about. So just, I always like to throw that out there because I, I think that's kind of the future too, is uh, aggregating your data and really effectively targeting uh, demographics and uh, optimizing your program. So. That's right. That's right. It's it's a uh, hyper personalization, and it's uh, it's 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 both informing uh, prospects and helping customers realize what they're getting by spending time and paying you money for what you're going to give them, and and informing and educating them on the why and the how, and uh, that's the business we're in, and then having the outcome and information to confirm that that's actually what's happening. So it's exactly, uh, yeah. pretty pretty rational to me. Will. Always a pleasure to chat with you, my friend. I'm so grateful that you made time for us today after escaping the hurricane. And I know uh, the listeners will enjoy hearing our uh, chat. And uh, thank you so much. Yeah. Thank you, Brian. I appreciate the time. Man. Hello, listeners. This is Brian O'Rourke. And thanks so much for listening to the Fitness Plus Technology Podcast. 
The podcast is made possible by the Fitness Industry Technology Council, a consortium of global brands working together to enhance the adoption of technologies in the fitness space. Our company, Videri Ventures, which is invested in Vertimax, Montezumo, Gold's Gym, Houston, Texas, and Fitness 24-7 Thailand, also underwrites the podcast along with our service companies, Integris Advisors, Moon Mission Media, and others. Please feel free to share this podcast with your colleagues. And if I can be of any assistance to you, don't hesitate to reach out, briankorourke at gmail.com or find me on any of the major social networks. Have a great day and thanks for listening.